This is a formal interview, but I prefer to say that I am sitting in the home of Rosalind Cash, actress, just talking to a friend and a woman whose work I admire very, very much. Roz, we're talking about your experiences at Nigger Ensemble Company. Mm -hmm. And then you came to Hollywood, and one of the films that you did, I think the third film that you did was Melinda. Yes, Melinda. There were a lot of firsts involved with that film. Uh, yes. You had a black producer, mm -hmm. Purvis Atkins, and a black director. Right. Uh, Hugh, Hugh, Robertson, Hugh Robertson, who was a renowned editor at that time. And that was his first, uh, his first film. Did you know he edited Midnight Cowboy? No, I didn't. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, right. He's bad brother. And Jerry Butler did the music. Yes. To uh, Melinda. Yeah. Lonnie Elder wrote the screenplay. The screenplay. It was, yeah, an ad adaptation. Yeah. Were there any particular pressures on you doing Melinda because there was a black producer and a black well, director and writer? Well, at one time I felt pressures, the pressures uh, trickled down to me in terms of making the film more uh, exploited, exploitative, mm -hmm. as we would say, we would say, uh, to make it more violent and more sexy at the time. But Is that's that what Lonnie wrote? No, he didn't write that. Mm -hmm. no, he wrote a film that uh, was a story, a mystery. You know, about some people who were involved in some intrigue. But because there were black players, uh, I was told that they wanted it to be you know, sexier and more violent. Mm -hmm. and I knew what was going on. And my role, <sighs> I think, gave them the blues. Because <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know what to do with me. Some of the newspapers called Melinda a black exploitation film or said that it was just a cut above it. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? I didn't read the newspaper reports, but um, I never thought of it as a black exploitation film. To me, that's just a label. Lonnie Elder, the screenwriter, wrote a mystery, a drama. Mm -hmm. And uh, though there was pressure, you know, to bring more of the violence and the sex that was uh, attendant to many black films of the day. Uh, we all went into the film feeling it was just a good movie. You know what I mean? The people would like it because it was a good movie. Did you have to learn karate for the film? No, I had to learn how to look at snakes <laughs> <laughs> and be cool. Lonnie Elder oh. told me later that he did not like snakes, so he had to put them in the film. I guess to exercise that fear, I don't know. <laughs> but I was not, they saved me with the karate, you know? Uh, uh, right, right. <laughs> no, but the karate was uh, uh, put in on purpose to, uh, to uh, show that you could deal with the criminal element without firearms. Mm -hmm. That was the very exact purpose of Lonnie Elder. If you'd notice, uh, there are no, there's no guns in this film, I had or knives, I had that the uh, the good guys uh, deal with the bad guys with the martial arts and outsmarting them. Oh, very interesting. You know, I, I hadn't picked up. I love Melinda. I think it's one of the best <laughs> movies ever made. I think you're one of the finest actresses around today, and yet you don't work that much. What is your attitude toward the industry now? Well. Um, I don't really have an attitude towards the industry. I've spent so much time trying to keep my equilibrium, and keep my mental health and spiritual health and physical health, that I feel like I'm a queen. All right. <laughs> and I feel that I would prevail. I feel my life is successful, that it works. These are some of the things I gave on another interview with that they refused to even print because I wasn't complaining. I feel that I'm very strong. I just finished making a movie. Uh, I'm getting ready to go to Europe and sing. I will go back to Africa and work there. I'm surrounded by love, whether it be in Los Angeles or New York. Uh, I refuse to deal with the industry as interpreting my worth. Mm -hmm. You see? I see. So uh, I, that says a lot. I want to work as an actor. I deserve it. I went to New York and I did a play. I'll work on television. I'll work in movies. But I don't seek this to make me complete. 
I'm an artist and I think I will be an artist whether the industry recognizes me or not. Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, I know they're not pat answers, you know, but uh, I'm a queen. You're right. You know, mm. I've been up for roles, I didn't get them. My agent said, you're too light, you're too dark, you're too old. You dress weird, you have dreadlocks. Screw it, I don't care about that anymore. I'm going beyond that. You know, you still rolling? Mm. I feel like I'm international. I think that the black artist is international. The third world is larger than this which we see here. There is an audience all over the world. Film is very powerful. I saw that when I traveled to Europe and Africa. And we have a place in it, and I don't think anything can stop us. I really don't. I think you have to feel that it's yours and not even take no for an answer. Do you see yourself doing some films in Africa or films with Africans? Is oh, yes. Africa? I see myself doing African films. I feel that we are international because we encompass it all. This culture, African culture, we've learned about the European culture. We're very bright people, we're very colorful. I think we're beautiful on film. And when I went to Africa, they said, oh, we want to see more of you. They're, they're running old films mm -hmm. with Jim Brown, bless his heart. They're running them old films. They send, the distributors send the porno and horror stuff there. I took a film clip to, Af clip to Africa. It blew their mind, sister, sister, I took a film clip. Excuse me, NBC. <laughs> but, but, you know, and they, did, they, they, they saw these beautiful black women and they, they ate it up. They love black Americans there. They crave our art. When I was in London, the black children who were cockney born in England said, Oh, Miss Cash, can you bring over Soul Train? We're very powerful people. Mm -hmm. And it reflects itself through film and TV. So nobody can tell me I can't do no film or TV. It's like they look around and say, she's still here? <laughs> you know? Yeah. This brother tells a story in the, no, well, it's not a story, it's true, in the islands. The television influence is so strong that in one, I think it's in Jamaica, there's a chief of police whose head is shaved and they call him Kojak. <laughs> Love and, it. And the police are now referred to as Starsky and Hutch. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see how? Yeah. Pervasive that is. Film is the greatest propagandist tool. Film and television, the same thing, in this country. A whole other program could, could, would, would suffice for my film experience in England, when I went to England to star in a movie with Glenda Jackson and Oliver Reed. The racism was such that I wanted to leave that island. I said, being a movie star is not worth this hassle this degradation, and a brother from Trinidad told me, you gotta be the spook who sat by the door. You can't walk off this film. The third world is watching you. Mm. Are you willing to take on that responsibility? I can't avoid it. If I'm gonna do films, no way I can't carry the responsibility. I know how powerful it is. I've always felt a responsibility in doing film. That's why you might not see me a lot. It's a lot of film I won't do. But whenever I'm doing a film, I'm trying to get, show that power that we have. And a lot of us do that. I see it, you know, because that's all we can do. But you can't tell me I can't make film, I can't be on television. It belongs to me and you and all of us. I refuse to take no for an answer. All right. All right? All right. Okay. <laughs> I think we all are queens. I really do. I really do.